What's up guys, this is Emmanuel from Team DBZ Biscuit and today we're coming at you with a Monarch deck profile. So let's jump into this deck profile and let's see what we're coming at you with. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure if you're new to the channel to hit the subscribe button. That'd be much appreciated. Also too, be sure to leave a like and a comment. That way we know what feedback you got from us guys. So let's jump into this. Let's see what we're coming at you with. To start things off, we're running three Erebus. Erebus is just good all around. He's the main monarch you want to have in your deck. Making sure that you can either send him to the graveyard, send one of your monarch spells to the graveyard, add him back to hand, or whenever he's normal summoned to send two of your monarch spells to the graveyard and get non-targeting removal or even sending card, one card back to the hand minus your opponent out one is very, very useful. He really helps out the deck. Since the release of the ban list, we got two Ether back. Ether is just, you know, a very crazy card to be able to tribute on your opponent's turn. Being able to send cards to the graveyard once again, just like Erebus' effect. Being able to make sure that you can special summon a Monarch and it returns to your hand at the end phase, setting up a play for next turn is very useful in being able to dodge some of your opponent's plays. I'm running one Caius the Mega Monarch. I really like Caius. I've always liked Caius, even way back in the day when they released Caius the Shadow Monarch. He's just all around good. If you tribute off a dark monster, you're going to be able to pop two cards. And if your opponent has multiple copies of that card, to be able to banish out multiple copies of it is very useful and really could put your opponent in a very, very problematic state. We're also running three Caius the Shadow Monarch. Like I said, I've always liked Caius. It's always one of the top monarchs to me, even before you you know get your uh, Thessalos Monarch to be able to look at the hand, things like that. I like being able to clear cards off the field, making sure my opponent can always be able to, you know, have to be able to be one for one advantage with me, be able to minus them out while I keep plusing on the board. Caius, if you uh, banish a dark monster, whether it be your opponent's monster or your monster, that player is gonna take a thousand attack point damage. If you make sure it's your opponents, you're going to be looking pretty good. You just want to make sure you're not doing the damage to yourself. We're also running three Idiots the Squire. This card is good for making sure you get that extra normal summon. Whenever he's normal summon, he's going to allow you to get another normal summon during that turn, which is very useful. Also, too, you can banish him out of the graveyard, especially summon one of the Squires out of the graveyard to the field and also be another tribute fodder. So very useful. We're also running three Idia, the Heavenly Squire. This card is the main one you want to see. You want to be able to make sure you get this card in hand as fast as possible, or if it's in the graveyard, to be able to special it out as fast as possible. She's going to allow you to be able to special summon one of your squires from out of the deck, or vassals, whichever ones you want to use. But also, too, it's going to help you to be able to, when it's sent to the graveyard, any of your banished monarch spells or traps, you're going to be able to get that back to hand. Usually you're going to want to use your Pantheism, keep that Pantheism cycling all day long. So she can be very useful for the deck and helps the deck generate the way you want to. And lastly for the monsters, I'm running three Mithra, the Thunder Vassal. This card, I, a lot of people like to run it at one or two. I like to run it at three. It is a free special summon, even though you're giving your opponent a token. That token's not going to really matter. And when I say that, you can either use Stormforth anything like that to either take that token back and get a free tribute or you can either just you know run it over however you want to play about that but also too if this card is used as a tribute summon you can get another tribute during the turn so that's another way to keep the ball rolling for your deck and keep the you know your opponent off guard and just keep throwing monarch effects at him all day long but that's it for the monsters for the spell cards we're running one reinforcement of the army. We want to be able to get that squire to the hand as fast as possible, the idiot to the hand as fast as possible. To be able to do that, gets the ball going, gets the tribute summons for the monarchs, helps the plays going for days. Also running one foolish burial of goods. I'm only running one of this. Uh, I chose to run this along with the reinforcements of the army, things like that. In other, instead of running uh, things like trade-ins or a lower darkness is because this is going to be able to help me get the engine going for the monarchs. It's going to help me to be able to send either the prime monarch to the graveyard or either the pantheism to the graveyard. Start getting things in the graveyard the way I want to, and that's going to start getting the plays going the way to me I want to for monarchs. 
that's the same thing with foolish burial to be able to send you know Erebus to the graveyard be able to send let's say you got a prime monarch in your hand send that to the graveyard just get the ball rolling for you got uh, fuel in the graveyard for the special summon for the tributes and just be able to get the plays going the way you want to that's the same thing with one for one I use one for one to be able to get the squire to the field as fast as possible usually what I like to do is I'll send something like the uh, Erebus to the graveyard special summon the squire the squire special summon another one use cards in my hand send them to the graveyard get the Erebus right back and just keep the you know just get the blaze going the way you want to they're very simple plays but the plays that you make you want to make sure that they're generating advantage for you that way your opponent starts minusing out and it just keeps the board on lock we're running one pantheism of the monarch this card is the most busted draw card and search card in the game this card to be able to just send one of your monarch spell and traps to the graveyard draw two cards then banish it out and reveal three and let your opponent choose what way you're going to punish them is very very good and like i said as long as you got the squires and the vassals and things like that it's going to make sure that you're going to be able to keep recycling this card back in the hand and just keep your plays going the way you want to We're also running three tenacity. Tenacity is just going to be able to, you know, reveal a monarch in hand, be able to search out any of your monarch spell and trap cards. It's just going to be able to help you get your play started the way you want to. We're also running three return. Return is, in my opinion, mandatory for the deck at three. You want to be able to see this card as fast as possible. The main thing about this is you're going to be able to help to chain block so that your opponent can't ash certain things, can't stop, affect Valor certain things, things like that, or Ogre even certain things. They're gonna have to stop this. But the thing is, to be able to set up your chains where this is coming in, in chain link two or three, depending on how you got your plays going, protecting your Monarch is very useful. But to be able, whenever you tribute summon, to be able to get one of your Monarchs to the hand is very useful, either it be the Mega Monarchs, the low level monarchs the 2400 monarchs or the 28 monarchs you'll be able to get that in your hand set your plays up for next turn i'm also running two march of the monarchs i still like march of the monarchs at two and to be able to make sure that your opponent can't just be able to just do whatever they want to to be able to just destroy your monsters very easily by card effects you know it's very problematic to the monarchs so being able to have a card out there that can make it so that your opponent really has to play around the field that you got up can be very useful we're also running three domain of the monarch you know this is you know what made monarchs really good back in the day to be able to lock out your opponent from their extra deck making sure that they can't do all the plays that they want to while you got a tribute summon monster on the field is very useful also it's going to help you to be able to reveal a monarch that monarch is going to be able to pretty much like cut down to two levels and if it's a mega monarch you're going to get it for one tribute so it's very very useful and also too when they're attacking it's going to give them that attack point boost so this card really helps the monarchs to be able to make the plays that it wants to make and helps to solidify the game state for whenever your opponent wants to sit there and get you know if they're real crazy combo deck that likes to play out of the extra deck you're pretty much locking them out on that and lastly for the spell cards we're running three monarch storm fourth this is a non-targeting removal just play the card and just being able to tribute off any of your opponent's cards is very very good i like that a lot to make sure that you know whatever you want a problematic monster they have you can just tribute it off it's almost like a kaiju summon so very useful very helpful and helps the deck to play around a lot of crazy monsters but that's it for the spell cards for the trap cards running three prime monarch this card really helps to give your monarchs you know a defensive wall also to being able to make sure that if it's all face up on the field to be able to spin cards back into the deck to spell and traps back into the deck which is something a lot of monarch players don't do but i like that effect because it makes it so that you can grind a little bit better being able to make sure you get that draw also can help the deck just keep the ball rolling in its advantage and in its favor very very useful very good card and lastly for the trap cards i'm running one escalation of the monarch this is very useful depending on how you set up your plays i usually like to use you know my Caius the mega monarch 
may be able to, whenever your opponent makes a play that you really don't like and they're going to start making plus advantage, to flip this card over, let it resolve. As soon as it resolves, treat it off one of your cards. Usually it's going to be one of your smaller Caiuses, one of your Vassals, or even one of your Ether or Ether, just whichever one it might be. Treat it off that monster. Bring out your Caius as long as you use the Dark Monster to be able to banish out two of their cards. It can really put them in a bad game state, so I really like that a lot. But that's it for the deck profile, guys. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, too, be sure to gallop gun that like button. Share, comment, subscribe. Thanks, guys, for all your love and support. We're out.